Good morning to all of you. Everybody had a good cup of coffee? Ready to go? I want to thank you all for joining us as we celebrate the Atlanta region's incredible journey. This morning, you have seen how bold leadership and thoughtful planning transformed a small railroad outpost into a thriving, dynamic region and a major player on the global economic stage. Now I'd like to offer you a perspective on the state of our region today. In recent years, Metro Atlanta has been on a journey of recovery from the Great Recession. And I'm happy to report that we've made significant progress. In the past year, the region's population grew by nearly 70,000 people, the largest increase since the financial crisis began in 2008. And our 10-county Metro Atlanta region is now home to 4.4 million people. That's more population than 24 states. 24 states. This growth is being fueled by a strengthening local economy, and as such, the region has added nearly 71,000 jobs over the past year. That's the fifth, fifth largest increase in the nation. Our growth is poised to continue. Seemingly every week, we hear news of a major company adding jobs to the metro region. So let me give you a few headlines. GE is moving their operations center, their global operations center, to Midtown Atlanta. Adidas is building a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Cherokee County. Chime Solutions is hiring 1,000 employees at their new headquarters in Clayton County. Kaiser Permanente is adding 600 jobs to Gwinnett County, and NCR will add 1,600 jobs to its new Midtown Atlanta campus. Getting the picture? Meanwhile, Atlanta remains a hot spot for small businesses and startups. These entrepreneurs are critical engines of our economy, providing so many of our jobs each and every year. And watch out, Hollywood. You can hardly turn on the TV or go to a movie without seeing something that's been filmed in Metro Atlanta. In fact, the next Spider-Man movie is being filmed right now at Pinewood Studios in Fayette, and that's amazing indeed. The film industry generates an economic impact of over $6 billion a year in Georgia, most of that here in Metro Atlanta. And when you factor in our thriving hip hop and music scene, it's clear that Atlanta has become an entertainment capital all over the world. The region's unemployment rate has fallen steadily to stand now at about 5%, down from 10% at the depth of the recession. And that's great news. Our jobless rate has been cut essentially in half. The improving economy has also helped to boost the region's housing market. Home prices increased by 6% in the past year, higher than the national average. And it's been a long, long climb, but home values in the metro Atlanta region have nearly reached their pre-recession peak. While things are certainly trending in the right direction, much work remains to be done to enhance the quality of our life in metro Atlanta, from transportation to education and so much more. We can't rest on our laurels if the region is going to thrive in the decades ahead. To help guide the region's planning and decision-making each year, ARC and several community partners conduct the Metro Atlanta Speaks Public Opinion Survey. This survey is the largest of its kind in the region, and it offers a statistically valid snapshot about how our neighbors, our families, how the, residents, how the region's residents feel about a range of critical issues in 13 counties and the city of Atlanta. So this is our fourth annual survey, and we've started to see some really fascinating trends. Let's take a look at this year's results. Metro Atlanta is a bold, dynamic region that's on the move. We are a growing, changing, and unique place. To take the pulse of our ever-evolving metropolis, the Atlanta Regional Commission, with our community partners and Kennesaw State University, conducts the annual Metro Atlanta Speak Survey. Now in its fourth year, the survey provides a snapshot of what's on the minds of Metro Atlantans. Our economy is on the upswing. We're a national leader in job growth, and we are feeling it. Today, nearly half of us believe job opportunities in the Atlanta region are excellent or good, up from 36% in 2013. In fact, only 12% of us say the economy is the biggest problem we face, a sharp decline from 2013. However, new questions on this year's survey shed light on the financial challenges many of us face. When asked how we deal with an unexpected $400 expense, only half said we could pay it off right away with cash, check, or a debit card. Nearly one in six of us said we wouldn't be able to pay at all. 
And one in five of us say we have skipped meals or reduced portions due to lack of money. Transportation remains our top concern. 25% of us say it's the biggest problem facing our region, about the same as the past few years. Nearly one in three of us say we often lack the option to get where we need to go. When asked to name the best long-term solution to our traffic problems, expanding public transit came out on top for the fourth straight year, followed by improving roads and highways. Overall, more than nine out of 10 think improving public transit is important to the region's future. That's an increase from 2013. The region's second biggest concern is crime. Nearly one in four of us say crime is the biggest problem facing Metro Atlanta, up significantly from 2014 and 2015. However, nearly two thirds of us say we feel safe in our own communities, an increase from last year. Metro Atlanta residents give the region's public education system mixed reviews. Although more than half of us are pleased with the schools in our communities, only 37% of us think public education in the metro area as a whole is excellent or good. Overall, most Metro Atlanta residents are optimistic about our region and are involved in making it better. Two-thirds of us say this is an excellent or good place to live. And 35% of us say life will be better in Metro Atlanta in three to four years, up from 28% in 2013. The Metro Atlanta Speaks survey tells us much about our region. We're scoring high on many fronts, but we can never take our eyes off the challenges. Working together, we can keep our region moving in the right direction. Metro Atlanta Speaks. We listen. Isn't that really interesting information? And that's fantastic doodling, don't you think? And for those of you who are wondering, no, none of those drawings were mine. I can draw a mean stick figure. In fact, copies of my work will be on sale in the lobby after you leave. Not really, you get the point. Um, as you saw, transportation remains our biggest concern among Metro Atlanta residents this year. The good news, of course, is that our region is making tremendous strides on a number of fronts to improve mobility and offer expanded transportation options. Earlier this year, the ARC board adopted the Atlanta Regions Plan, a blueprint for Metro Atlanta's future growth. And it features $85 billion of investment in transportation infrastructure over the next 25 years. A sampling of some of the things that the blueprint includes. A network of managed lanes promising less congested rides for those who pay a fee, ride transit, or carpool an expanded transit system providing new ways for getting around town without driving, improved arterial roads and highway interchanges, and a regional network of bicycle and pedestrian trails, which we're really excited about. And we won't have long to wait for some of these projects to be completed. In fact, our partners at the Georgia Department of Transportation plan to open up managed lanes in next year, 2017, on I-75 flowing through Henry County and Clayton County. Similar lanes are going to be open in 2018 on I-75 in Cobb and I-575 in Cherokee. Meanwhile, Governor Deal has unveiled an exciting plan to accelerate road and bridge construction throughout the state thanks to Georgia's Transportation Funding Act. Major projects of Metro Atlanta getting fast-tracked will include managed lanes on Georgia 400 and the top end of I-285 and new interchanges on I-285 and I-20 on both the east and the west sides of town. I'm looking forward to that personally. You may have heard there's a little election taking place on November the 8th. And while the presidential race is getting all the headlines and all the buzz, much more is on the ballot. Decisions will be made locally that should hold the potential to help shape our region for decades to come. For example, legislation has enabled Fulton County and the city of Atlanta to hold new transportation related sales tax votes. If these are approved, if a range of additional transportation projects will be funded, including expansions of MARTA and transit within the city and road improvements in Fulton County. And as you saw, yep, clap for that. And as you saw in the Metro Atlanta Speaks video, nearly one in three residents 
say they often lack the transportation they need to get around the region. And more than nine out of 10 say transit is important for Metro Atlanta's future. That bears repeating, more than nine out of 10. Some of you here today will have a chance to have your voices heard at the polls on these critically important votes. And so to all of you, I say, please don't forget to get out and vote. All right, now enough of that. Let's turn to another pressing matter facing our region, specifically water resources. I'm sure all of you can recall how hot and dry it was this spring and summer. Unfortunately, our dry spell has continued into the fall and we remain in a drought condition. And that's why it's more important than ever before that we do our part to conserve water and use it wisely. But know that thanks to strong regional planning and conservation efforts, we are better prepared than ever to manage through dry periods that are part of the normal weather cycle. Today, total water use in the region has dropped over 10% since 2001. Over 10% since 2001, even as our population has increased by more than a million people. Now that is real meaningful change. Conservation has become a way of life in Metro Atlanta, and it's vitally important that we be sure to continue that habit. Our air quality has improved also, meaning better health for so many of us, especially seniors and young children. Since 2000, particle pollution has dropped nearly in half, while ozone concentrations have fallen by 30%. Our work in this area is never really done, of course. We have to continue to work hard and remain vigilant in order to meet tougher standards that we know are on the horizon. We're becoming a much more diverse place with fast-growing Hispanic and Asian American communities, and our older adult population is exploding, growing at the fastest rate in the nation the fastest rate in the nation, as people live longer and as the baby boom generation ages, which includes me, I know that doesn't apply to anybody in this room. In 2040, one in five of us will be over the age of 65 as compared to today when one in 10 of us are over 65. And this is a profound demographic shift and it requires us to rethink how we design communities and how we provide services. We must do things differently to ensure that older adults, many of you, will be able to thrive and survive. Earlier I told you about the region's economy improving and that's a great thing. And it's getting better for so many of us, but that's not the case for all of us. And it was clear from the survey that about half of us, half of us wouldn't be able to pay immediately if we had a $400 in an unexpected bill. And almost 20% of us said they sometimes skip meals in order to make ends meet. Those are sobering numbers. We've got some work to do. And I mean all of us have some work to do. This isn't an isolated po problem. Poverty exists all across the region, from the urban core to the suburban ring to our outer rural reaches. We must meet this challenge by working together. No single organization can bring about this change by itself. We heard this message last year from our State of the Region breakfast speaker, the young lady from Canada, Savan Palvetsian. Remember her? And I'm going to tell you now about a few exciting regional efforts that are beginning to demonstrate the power of our collaboration together. The first one is the Aerotropolis Atlanta Alliance. This coalition made up of local governments that neighbor the airport, large corporations, local businesses and nonprofits, and the airport itself plans to transform the area around Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta into a regional economic competitor. And the group that we've had the honor of working with recently adopted a blueprint to guide future economic and community growth in the airport area. Importantly, we believe this effort will serve as a catalyst to stimulate greater growth in the entire South Metro area. Our future success as a whole region depends upon the health and strength of the entire region. I'm also thrilled to announce at the imminent launch of an innovative regional education initiative that we call Learn for Life. This cradle to career approach aims to improve student achievement and workforce readiness using a data-driven collective impact approach. This is a collaborative kind of effort that Savan mentioned. Learn for Life has been under development for the past few years by a diverse group of educators, nonprofit leaders, and business executives. Through Learn for Life, we'll be measuring student outcomes at key benchmarks in a child's life and sharing and cultivating best practices 
all across the region. Learn for Life will hold promise to improve the educational foundation for many of our region's children. And it's been really exciting to watch this program come together and starting to get off the ground. The level of collaboration is virtually unprecedented in our region. Eight local school systems are participating in the effort. And they're gonna be supported by four of our leading regional organizations. The Community Foundation for Greater Atlanta, the Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce, the United Way for Greater Atlanta, and the Atlanta Regional Commission. And there's similar exciting work taking place through our regional economic competitiveness strategy. Now in its fourth year, the program is fueled by the efforts and the time of hundreds, thousands actually, of volunteers from across the region. One example of their work, the Prosperous Committee, has brought together all of Metro Atlanta's major economic development organizations to foster greater communication and collaboration. And each year, this committee has been holding an event to collectively market Metro Atlanta as a great place for businesses to locate and to expand. And that's a first for our region, that level of cooperation amongst them. So as Ambassador Young said, we can do much if we do it together. So I urge all of you to find an issue that you care about and seek out others who share your concern, your passion, and your determination. Talk to them, explore with them, and be surprised at what we can do when we all work together. Now, we've come a long way since our region's journey began in 1837. We've risen from the ashes of war. We fostered the civil rights movement joined together to host the Centennial Olympic Games and built the world's busiest airport and developed a globally competitive economy. But our reason's journey is far from complete. Former U.S. Army General Chief of Staff Eric Shinseki once said, if you don't like change, you're going to like irrelevancy even less. As a regional community, we must constantly evolve to adapt to a fast-changing world anticipate new challenges, and take advantage of the opportunities that will arise before us. Other regions aren't standing still, and neither can we.